If you need to insert some shapes into your document, Microsoft has some defaults here that you can come up here, click on the Insert tab, go to the Illustrations group, and there it is, Shapes. Click on the drop-down arrow, we've got some ready-made ones here. Let's go ahead and choose a star, click on that, and then to draw the star, after I click on it, you'll notice that my pointer, or I-beam, is turned into a black cross. That means that you're in drawing mode. To draw, just simply click and hold the left mouse button down and drag down and to the right diagonally. Now, if I go up and to the right, you can see that it's stretched more horizontally than vertically, or down and to the left, it's more vertical than horizontal. If I want to keep it at a perfect proportion when I'm moving my mouse around, hold down the shift key and it pops it out to the perfect proportion there of the star. And then go ahead and let go of the left mouse button and let go of the shift key and cool, we got a nice star. Once we have it drawn, we get its related contextual format tab. So we can go ahead and look at some of the uh, shape styles. We can click on the more button and choose one of these. Click on it and it eh, looks pretty good. Or we can go ahead and customize it by coming up here, clicking on the shape fill, drop down arrow and choosing another color like red. And then we can have an outline to it. Click on the drop down arrow, choose a uh, blue color. You can barely see the blue outline around it. If you want to really see it, then we can go ahead and change the weight of it, make it thicker, go down to weight. And let's do oh, thicker. Okay, that looks good. And then any shape effects, click on the uh, drop down arrow for shape effects. And we can do shadows, reflections. Ooh, I like reflections. Those are fancy. Maybe something not so large, but maybe a little bit smaller. Click on that, and eh, it's kind of nice. Also, we can add text to our shapes. Just go ahead and right click on the shape, go down to add text, click on it, places the cursor inside the shape here, and then we can just, you know, type in star. Now when I start typing it, because it can't squeeze all the text within it, you may have to hover over the lower right hand corner, the resizing handle, and then click and drag it to stretch it. And notice even though I have the lower right hand corner, for pictures and illustration it stretches it proportionally, but if I go down and left it stretches it more vertically, up and right, horizontally. If I hold down the shift key, it'll do it proportionally, then I can let go, and now I can see, oh, made a mistake, it's not start. Let me go back inside, hit the backspace key, it's my star click off and then when you do that of course you uh, lose the format tab because we don't have the object or shape selected down below select it to bring it back up I can come back up here click on the insert tab to the illustrations group and insert or draw more shapes or if I already have one shape selected I can click on the format tab and come over here to the insert shapes and choose another shape in fact you'll notice that these shapes at least for the rectangles and the let me hover over that one ovals where are the circles and squares well, if you go ahead and you click on a rectangle, you can draw a square out of it by holding down the shift key. So I get my black cross, go ahead and click and drag. When I hold down the shift key, it pops open to a perfect square. And then let go of your mouse button, and there you go. To draw the perfect circle, you have to select the oval. Click on the oval up here, come down here, click and drag. If I go down uh, more vertically, there's the oval, more horizontally. But hold down the shift key, pops it open, perfect circle, let go of the left mouse button. Cool. Now I'm going to leave this for a second and open up the document that we used in the previous training video by coming down here and right clicking on my Word document. Now the operating system I have is Windows 7 and it allows me to get my jump list here. If you don't have Windows 7 then you won't be able to do this but in any case I'm going to open up my pull quotes document. Click on that. When I open it up and I want to insert a shape, go to the illustrations group, click on shapes and you know go ahead and click on the rectangle then click and drag. Hold down the shift key to make the perfect square and let go. It lays it right on top of the text, and as we learned in earlier training videos, if you want the text to wrap around a shape, an object, or a text box, just go ahead and select it and either right click on it and go to wrap text, and you can see the picture of the doggy or horsey there with lines around it. Lines represent the text, and the doggy represents the object, shape, or picture. In any case, you can do something square, tight. You can actually have the text in front of it, behind it. If I do it tight, then there we go, it wraps around it, okay? Or you can just, after you select it, come up here on its related contextual format tab, go to the Arrange group, click on the Wrap text drop-down arrow, and you can choose it from there as well, okay? All right, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that, not save it. Back to where we are. Now, notice how one shape is overlaid on top of another. In fact, if I click on this shape and I hover over the border, you see the four-way arrows there? I can go ahead and click and drag that and move it, and notice how it's on top of the star and also the circles on top of the star but is the circle on top of the square let me go ahead and click and drag that and you can see when I click off that the circles on top of the square the squares on top of the star well what if I want the star to be below the circle but just above the square 
So we've got our layers here. We have this one's on top, next, and then start the last. So to change the layers, just go ahead and select the uh, shape, object, or image. Go ahead and right click on it, and then go up and you've got two options. Either bring it to the front or send it to the back. We already have it at the back. We want to bring it to the front, but when you hover over it, it says, do you want to bring it to the front or bring forward? The difference is, is that when you bring it to the front, it brings it completely to the front, and it puts it in front of all the other objects. But let me go ahead and hit undo. If I right click on it, then I go down instead to bring it forward, it brings it forward one layer. So now it's one layer ahead of the square, but one layer behind the circle. So if I go ahead and right click on it again and bring it forward one more, it's now brought forward another layer, which coincidentally is the top layer here. You can also, when you select it, if you don't want to right click, of course, come up here to its related contextual format tab to the arrange group, and there you've got your send backward, bring forward which brings it forward one layer or sends it back one layer. Click on send back, click on send back, and we're back to where we started here. Finally, if I have an object like this big circle and I click and drag it in front of the square, and I don't want to move the circle because it's in the perfect position, but I do want to get a hold of that square that's behind it, how do I get to it? Because I have to click and drag it out of the way. Now I moved it out of its perfect position, and I can't remember what it is when I click and drag and move that. To click and drag it and go, uh, I think it's somewhere here. You see what I'm saying? So let me go ahead and click and drag the square because it's at the second layer. It goes behind the circle. To get the square, let me click off. Now I can't see it. I can't select it. What you can do is you can go ahead and select one shape and hitting the tab key, it will toggle through all the other shapes. So you can see it went to the star, hit the tab key, and it went to the square. It doesn't show me the square. It just shows me the outline of the square with the resizing handles. Then all I have to do is go ahead and once I see the border, hover over it till I see my four-way arrow, click and drag it, and there we go. That way I didn't have to move the shape that was in front of it and get it out of its perfect alignment or position on my document. Now, in addition to the resizing handles that we learned in our picture training video, one last thing here is that you do have the rotating handle as well. Click and drag that to rotate it, tilt it one way or the other. In fact, you want to watch my training video on modifying pictures because what you see in there you can do to your shapes illustrations and other objects thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos and for great specials on my products please see the description below this video